Hi everyone. So you may know me from my YouTube channel where I do a lot of drawing tutorials and a wide variety of subjects. Um, but one thing in particular that you will note from my YouTube channel is that I do a lot of tutorials using pen and ink. I definitely work in pencil, I definitely work in charcoal and other drawing media as well, but pen and ink has always been a favorite. Now in this first video I'm going to go over some of the um, uh, basic concepts I think that are necessary for you to get a grasp of or understand um, as you try to convey texture with pen and ink. Now this will also address certain basic concepts that are important to pen and ink as well not just necessarily texture or learning how to convey realistic texture but that's general drawing good drawing practice alright now a lot of times people have asked me okay what kind of paper should I use now what I, what I have here is just basic copy paper alright so you put in your printer just to print stuff out um, is this okay for drawing of course anything that you can get your hands on I've, I've had I've had actually um, I've done drawings on uh, napkins in a restaurant you know because sometimes when the impulse takes you the impulse just takes you and you have to just go with it and I and I draw with anything that I have however this may not necessarily be for uh, the best paper for uh, preservation you know if you want to have your drawing last for a long time I wouldn't advise you drawing something like this for quick sketches gesture drawings you just want to capture something in a moment definitely but if you want to seriously do um, or if you want to do some serious drawing, um, I wouldn't advise you use uh, paper like that. I advise that you try to invest in as best quality paper as you possibly can. Your drawing is going to be on this thing. You know, when you've done all that work, this is the thing that preserves it. Okay, so it's important that you have a good vehicle for your drawing. What kind of paper do I recommend? Um, there are two main types of paper that I use. Um, I use uh, either a hot press watercolor paper or I use a bristle pad and this is a bristle sheet and you can see it's really thick and um, you know this is really good because it allows the the pen to glide over the paper really easily and I find like I have no issues at all now the thing is which is really cool is that it is thick enough to withstand any water meter that you may add so if you want to add watercolor afterwards you know it's, you can definitely do that now the uh, heavyweight drawing pad is also good um, I've tried it with light washes and it holds up pretty fine it's really thick now if you have something like this you know the little sketchbook little sketch pad that you take around with you this is fine as well for creating little nice little gesture drawings or studies on the go I always have some I, I think I have a ton of these because I they just slip in your little bag or your pocket wherever you go and you can always have them to draw with you know something like this is more for work at home where I can you know have enough space and time to really focus but something like this super useful and I would advise anyone to get their hands on these if you can all right so what kind of instruments are we going to use well first I like to say you can use just about any ink pen that you can get your hands on okay don't feel you have to get some um, expensive ink drawing pens um, but I advise that if you can invest in a good set of drawing pens okay and I advise like you get like a, a fine point like um, uh, you know you can get something that is as a fine point um, something of a medium point you know and something with a bold point um, and that allows you to create to fill in certain areas pretty quickly or create you know really bold marks if you want to alright it's always a good idea to have a, a wide range of pen tip sizes if all you have is a bold point pen don't feel you can't create really wonderful drawings okay there's a lot of drawings I've created with um, a simple ballpoint pen that people wouldn't believe that I did with a, a cheap I mean you can buy a set of these like um, like a set of 12 for like two bucks now in terms of creating drawings that you hope to last for a long time well you know ballpoint pen the ink is not going to be of that high quality it's not going to have the permanence it may not be guaranteed of the uh, waterproof um, type of characteristics that you may want if you want to add watercolor to it or something like that so I may not advise it for really serious work I think if you can just try your best to invest in uh, a really good quality ink drawing pen okay it's also a good idea to have a pen like a chisel tip or something that's really bold pens like these are useful for covering large areas you know if you're shading somewhere in you know you can do it pretty easily with a pen like this I mean, look what I did with just uh, a, a couple strokes. Imagine if I were using a pen like this to do this. 
yeah, tomorrow sometime I'll be done. All right. Um, of course, it's also good to have a um, a good eraser on hand. Um, here I have a kneaded eraser. Your kneaded erasers are really cool because, of course, you know you can mold it to whatever shape you want, and you can just sometimes just dab. You don't have to be as abrasive as this because sometimes you know you may use an eraser like this and lift some of the pen marks. You know and you may not necessarily want that so something like this is gentle enough to just you know gradually work out the uh, the pencil and uh, of course if you can get your hands on an electric eraser this is sometimes useful as well alright but it's not necessary I think but it's it's good to have so I'm just gonna be using a normal HB number two pencil okay um, you can use a mechanical pencil of course um, you know, there's a variety of types of, uh, this is a two, two uh, millimeter lead holder. Um, you can use something like this, you can use a normal, you know, as far as pencils, the only advice I'd give is use something that's um, not too hard or too soft. If it's too hard, you may actually score the paper and the ink may seep into it and create some white lines, you know, which you may not want. And also, if you use something that's too soft, you can actually start smudging as you you know go through with your drawing and then that may be difficult to erase and it may also you know smear your drawing as well so I advise that you just try to use something in the HB or B range something that's really light and not too deep so the most important thing to be aware of when you're creating texture is that all textures are ultimately created from patterns okay a particular pattern of strokes or a particular pattern of mark making and it's important to practice as much as possible how to create consistent marks or keep your marks consistent so if you're creating a particular pattern or create particular texture be aware of the type of strokes like say for example um, most people like creating um, like say say you're drawing animals it's good to understand that you know when you're creating a fur or hair like texture you're really just creating simple strokes that are just dashes so in other words I'm just gonna do one row like this see that and all you're doing from here is just overlapping these in other words what I'm doing very quickly is I set my tip down and flick it flick 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 but what I'm doing is doing this consistently over and over and notice that I'm trying to be consistent consistent in terms of uniformity in size spacing layering and so on so I'm keeping them pretty consistent now this is for example sake so it's good to practice whatever the texture is that you're gonna create try to be consistent with how you lay them down see that I'm trying to maintain an overall uniformity among all the marks that I'm making now even if I'm doing simple scribbles see I'm trying to be uniform with these scribbles now will the texture always look like this of course not but this is what I think is foundation practice it's very important to try to learn to be consistent with your strokes so an exercise that I always advise is create a grid something that looks like uh, like this and challenge yourself to create as many different types of textures as possible and notice that they're all consistent because ultimately that's what conveys the texture see now as you go forward in terms of learning how to create realistic texture We'll, we'll learn how to manipulate these and actually vary them so they can actually look more three-dimensional. Notice that these are pretty flat. See, I'm not trying to create depth with any of these. The idea is just to be a, consistent with the pattern of strokes you're laying down. In the same way, even if you're using stipples, try to be consistent, all right? So, when it comes to uh, creating realistic texture, now we actually start going into uh, paying attention to varying things okay so one of the things that I always and you know what I'm going to be consistent so I'm going to create the examples using these two textures since that we have started with them now imagine that this is a, a round form if it's a round form this right now is flat right so as you can 
pass a, thing, a string through it like that. That's flat, okay? Now, if you want to create three dimensions or convey three dimensionality, you have to imagine that it is like so. See, this isn't flat. Imagine like the same thing. Lines are straight. See? That's three dimensional. All right. So now, when you're creating realistic texture, it's important to understand that the texture that you're creating is following the form of something three-dimensional. Now, before I go into shading, I'll address this. That two things that are very important when it comes to creating realistic texture is, one, to make sure that the texture defines the form. Now, I'm going to create two forms here. One, I'm going to outline in pencil, and you'll see why in a second. Now, I'm going to use the same texture, and I'm going to fill this shape. See that? Now, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now, what's going to be different with this one is... See how this texture is confined within this shape? Here, I'm going to break that shape and I'm going to let the texture define the contour. So now the contour of this shape or the outline of this shape is defined by the texture we see within it. You see the difference? This actually feels much more realistic than this does simply because I have allowed the texture to define the outer contour or the outline of this shape in contrast to this. So in other words, avoid that if your intention is to create a realistic texture. Another simple principle is, I refer to as like the less is more principle. And what do I mean by that? Uh, it means that you don't have to draw things literally as you see it. Say for example, you see a shape like this, you don't necessarily have to do all of the textures. Or, or cover the entire surface with texture. You can simply do something like this. I have the outline. And then I just cover some areas and others I leave open. And that's enough. See, it's, it's even more realistic than this one because this conveys or implies light and shadow. And that's very important. Now, as I say light and shadow, we'll just, you know, segue right into something else. And that's learning how to uh, vary the texture to conform to the form <laughs> or uh, follow the form. So this is, as we said, it's, it's three-dimensional like this. All right, you can imagine an axis passing through like that. See, it's a three-dimensional shape. Now, two things that are important for us to do is, one, let's imagine that there's a light source here. And if there's a light source here, that means there will be a separation in areas of light and shadow. So there will be shadow down here and light up here. Now, texture does the same thing. If you look at something like, uh, like this, it may not appear to you right now as if it's uh, falling light and shadow, but it actually is. If, uh, let's see if I can. Okay. Now, if you notice, right here is brighter than here. See, this part is in shadow. So if I'm creating this, if I'm conveying, representing this texture, I have to make sure that here is lighter than here, even when I'm addressing the, the texture. See? Same thing with, uh, with this. See, you can sense light, you can sense shadow. So that means everything that we draw three-dimensionally responds to light and shade. So we have to make sure that texture does the same thing. So in other words, what I did here or what I did here, I would apply here. Okay, what I did here, I'd apply here, not this. This, doesn't, this just conveys the texture, but it doesn't convey light and shadow. See, so I'd have to make sure this is the texture. This is the texture. And what I do is the marks down here in the shadow areas, I'm pressing down on the pen. See? 
right here is the, the, the border that separates light from shadow and I'd make sure down here they're pretty thick I'm pressing down on the pen and I'm making them really close now as it goes over it gradually gets lighter and spaced out so in other words I'm creating a gradation in value from dark to light that's what I'm doing so in this area I'm saying that it's so brightly lit you can barely see the texture and that's exactly what happens with realistic forms if you observe anything around you you'll notice the same thing the texture conforms to light and shadow effects so where there's shadow it will be darker and in the light areas it's lighter deeper in value lighter in value it reflects light and shadow right and in terms of following form it's the same thing so notice it is this is a three-dimensional shape or we're assuming it is so just to I'm going to ignore light and shadow and just do this to illustrate the fact that texture should follow the form so in other words I may not necessarily do like this see all of the strokes are going in the same direction instead what I'll do is something like this I'll zoom in so you can get a better look I'm actually going to adjust the strokes so notice that the strokes on this side are facing outwards strokes on this side will be facing outwards in this way so it's like they're they're opening up and that's because I'm thinking about this form so on this side they're going to be aligned in this way and they turn as they go around see so it's giving you a feel like it's facing this way and it's, when it turns it faces that way so this is essentially what I'm doing as I go around the form the strokes are like this see that so this is facing this way this is facing this way this is facing this way and so on in the middle would be like this that's the difference that I'm making in how I lay these strokes down and as a result this will give you the impression that I'm following the shape that's what's going on see so that's what I mean by conforming or following the form as you create a texture so if it is a, a spherical form like this of course the texture will also follow the form see that if it is a block the texture will follow the form they'll all be parallel 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 all right now if you're familiar with my tutorials on YouTube you will find that I always advise that you learn to visualize things through simple forms and also to start with the basics now with texture it's no different now every single thing that you will draw can be visualized in some way through uh, simple forms and when I say simple forms I mean uh, as simple as a cube a cube is perhaps as simple as you can get a spherical form a, a cube um, a cylinder you know simple geometric forms or even a cone you know an egg these are simple forms okay and it's good to practice visualizing things through or in terms of these simple things now in terms of practicing your texture this is perhaps one of the, uh, the coolest way you can learn to do that and what I advise is that you try to incorporate all of these things that we discussed earlier in terms of you know one uh, be learn to be consistent with your strokes now learn to define the contour of the form with the strokes or the pattern um, learn to convey light and shadow 
and also follow the form with the same texture. So you're not just laying down arbitrary strokes here. What you're actually doing is trying to convey structure and volume and light and shadow using this texture. And that's one of the important things about pen and ink is that you have to learn that strokes or mark making can have multiple functions. And you are not only using it to create texture, but you're using it to convey volume and light and shadow. So what I'm doing here is I am, as I approach this light area, and I'm assuming light is coming from this side, I am lightening my strokes as it approaches the light area. And they become deep as they go into shadow. They overlap a lot more. See that? And it's the same thing that you would do even with something like this. Even if it's, say for example, this is a piece of wood. See, first what I'm doing is I'm breaking the contour. Just using the contour only conveys the texture. And I haven't even started going in to, you know, create like the pattern. This is the wood pattern I'm creating here. What I'm doing is laying in a, a, a layer of strokes and then I'll draw on top of that. And what that does is it creates a deep value and conveys that this side of the block is in shadow. And that's pretty much the idea. And as I said, these are the core principles that I generally follow in my practice. And it's being consistent with your pattern, uh, having your, your texture break the contour, not be encased within a flat contour, and having it follow the form in terms of light and shadow, in terms of structure and volume. And also, applying the less is more concept. Understand that you don't have to cover the thing completely with whatever texture it is. You have to give some work to the imagination and that's what this does. And it ends up being more effective than this. All right. So um, hopefully you guys learned a lot from this and um, let's move to the next video.